You know when the advisor schedule comes up? It was it's up. Oh, it was blank to me. On the other I think Dr. Weiss is just doing walk-ins this week, but mine, but mine is up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think Dr. Weiss, I think you just go to her office and then you can. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, she's back. I she's thought, back. Okay. I thought she said she got another semester. Oh, she made it. Oh, no way. We need her. <laughs> I know. She she knew that. It was going to be busy. <laughs> it's already busy. <laughs>
Doing good, doing good. Okay. My name is Justin, so I am the instructor for uh, this course. And so, uh, you know, I know some of you, some of you may know me, and then, but some of you I know is our, uh, you know, uh, meeting for the first time. So, you know, welcome, let me say. Uh, welcome to this course and welcome to the spring semester. Okay, so today is the first lecture. And so what I thought I'd do is that, you know, we're not, we're not really going to cover, you know, anything, um, you know, too crazy today. We're mostly going over the syllabus. Um, I want to give a tour of the course website. So for those of you who haven't, uh, um, who have never taken my course before, I, I want to let you know kind of where everything is on the website. Because uh, I do try to post uh, a decent amount of content on the website. Um, you know, if you read the kind of the welcome email, I do record all the lectures and I post the lectures. And so I want to make sure you guys know where those are. Uh, I want to make sure um, you guys know where to find the lecture notes and everything like that. So today's just an introduction day. Uh, we're probably going to finish early and, and that's and that's totally fine. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Are there any questions I can answer before we uh, get started for today? You're great. You are great. Okay, all right, let's go and get started. So that is my name. So my name is Professor Justin Tram. So, um, you know, as you can tell, I, I, I don't care too much what you call me. Um, you know, you call me Justin, you call me Professor, whatever is comfortable for you. Uh, if it's comfortable for you, it's comfortable for me. That's kind of what I always tell people. So, um, so okay. Um, so just whatever you want. So I, I, I say this every year. I think this joke is getting kind of old and probably if you've had me before, you're getting sick of it. But, um, you know, I've, I've, I play a lot of online games, so I'm, I'm, I'm no stranger to people calling me all kinds of things online. So, you know, if you want to be, if you want to call me like big face or something like that, you know, <laughs> someone actually did that last semester and it was, it was, it was, it was funny. So, you know, if you want to do that, that's fine too. You know, as long as I can tell that you're talking to me um, and you're, and you're being somewhat respectful, then that's, that's, <laughs> that's all I really care about. Okay. Uh, so that's my email address. So my email address is uh, just ran at fortune.edu. Um, it's somewhat easy to remember because you just think, you know, you just ran a mile or something like that. And that's my email address. Um, I'm from here. So, you know, Fullerton is something that uh, is a place that I'm, you know, very familiar with. I grew up in Cyprus. Uh, if you're not sure where that is, that's about, you know, eight, 10 miles west of here. So, you know, I used to hang out in downtown Fullerton with my friends all the time. Um, so, you know, working here has been, has, has been great because I can see my family on a regular basis, which is good. A bit about my background. So I got my bachelor's from UCLA. I got my master's from UCSD, my PhD from Stanford, uh, all in mechanical engineering. So, you know, I'm very familiar with the curriculum and all the courses that, that we teach. And in terms of my research interests, uh, I am really interested in applying engineering tools uh, for biomedical applications. In particular, uh, I'm a fluids guy by, by nature. So I, um, you know, a lot of my research has to do with running computational simulations of blood flow um, and using that to study cardiovascular disease uh, virtual surgeries and all that stuff. Okay? And of course, just naturally as, as an educator in STEM, I'm just always interested in better ways that we can teach our courses here. Uh, questions on this? It was you, Keith. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> all, right. all right, learning objectives. And so, um, you know, this is going to be a regular kind of staple in, in my courses. So what I like to do at the beginning of every course, at the beginning of every lecture, is I like to kind of post uh, what I call learning objectives. And so what these are, are basically kind of what you can expect to learn for the day, okay? Um, so I think, you know, a lot of people kind of see it as just like an outline in terms of, you know, what you can expect mm -hmm. to learn that day, but I, I write them very thoughtfully. And so if you kind of look through my, my learning objectives, I always start them with a verb, okay? Um, and the reason I do that is because, you know, I want you guys to look at these learning objectives and I want you to be able to basically be able to do that by the end of the lecture. And so the reason I kind of write these like this is that, you know, you can kind of almost self-assess yourself to see um, how well you understood the lecture or not. And so, you know, by the end, and so for instance, by the end of today, um, if you're not able to describe the use and utility of simulation tools uh, for performing engineering work, then, you know, maybe you should watch the, the lecture, okay? So they're good. They're not only good outlines from before we begin, but they're also good things to look back on after the lecture to kind of make sure that you got everything that I wanted you to get from the lecture, okay? So, We'll have, you'll see these at the beginning of every lecture. Um, and so I always encourage people to write them down um, just so that, you know, you can, it helps better organize your notes as well. Okay. okay so let's get into the course. And so, you know, um, usually on the first day, I, I usually don't like to do too much. Like I mentioned, um, we mostly go over the syllabus. We go over the course website, but one of the things that I like to do is I like to go, I like to talk about, you know, what can you kind of expect from the course in general? Okay. And I think that's especially relevant for this course because, you know, you look at the title, Computational Heat Transfer, um, and, you know, some people might think that that title is, is kind of self-explaining, uh, but I want to kind of go a bit deeper than that, okay? 
And so my kind of like one sentence definition for this course is that uh, what we're gonna learn basically is a collection of numerical and computational techniques uh, for simulating heat transfer and fluid mechanics phenomena um, on a computer, okay? And kind of the advantage that we get is that we're able to leverage uh, computers and kind of the computational power that computers have to perform all the arithmetic and algebraic al calculations uh, that are much faster than, than humans, okay? Um, so, you know, I think everyone in this class has completed 407. Um, so you have kind of an idea of what heat transfer is, but um, probably what all you've taken is just, all you've done is just kind of hand calculation solves. And so what, what we're gonna see here is that, you know, what a computer lets us do is that it lets us solve kind of more complex uh, phenomenon on more complex geometries. And that kind of lets us a lot, uh, do a lot more with it than, you know, just, you know, just knowing the, uh, the concepts and, and, uh, and theory, okay? Um, and this is particularly relevant for heat transfer and fluid because these are kind of notorious for being extremely difficult to work with just because of, you know, how kind of finicky and how complex they are, okay? And so I would, I would argue that, you know, any kind of, I would say, practical um, work in heat transfer and fluids, it involves some kind of computational techniques. Because even, even in the simplest geometries, um, even those are kind of too complex to really do with hand calculations. And so, you know, if you want to work in kind of the fluid thermal area, uh, whether it be aerodynamics or any kind of thermal design, um, you're going to be using some kind of computational tool. And so the idea with this class is to kind of introduce you to, you know, what those techniques are um, and kind of how to use them um, in a way to kind of get the, get the most out of it. Okay. Um, and kind of like my last bullet point there, I kind of already said. And so basically what it allows is design and analysis of engineering systems with geometries and loadings and boundary conditions that are kind of way too complicated to do with, uh, with hand calculations, okay? All right, any questions on, on this so far? I might be a little bit out of breath today because I, I, am, I am a little bit under the weather. Um, although, I, although, you know, to be honest, I've kind of been inviting, but my wife has been sick for the last week. And yesterday I, I saw my family and I'm like, you know, it's weird. My wife has been sick the whole week, but I haven't gotten sick. And my sister was like, what are you saying? Like, now you're going to get sick. And she like, she like knocked on a ton of wood for me, but you know, I still got sick anyway. So, right. okay, so let's look at an example. So this is kind of a, this should be a problem that is familiar to you until heat transfer last year. Um, so this is basically heat transfer through a wall. Okay. And so we have a fairly simple situation. We have a temperature T1 on one side and temperature T2 on the other side. So we have a higher temperature on the left, a lower temperature on the right. Okay. And what you can do is that you can solve the heat equation in this, uh, in this situation to determine, you know, how the temperature varies in the solid. And so, you know, if you kind of go through the entire uh, heat equation process, we assume that there's no generation. Uh, what you see is that the temperature linearly changes. And so there's a linear change from T1 to T2 from the left side of the wall to the right, okay? And I would say, you know, in terms of really practical stuff, this is kind of the limit of what you can do with hand calculations, okay? <laughs> And say, for instance, you know, you want to do something like this, where you have a, you know, this is a, tur this is a turbine, okay? Um, and so if you wanted to find the temperature distribution of a turbine, let's say in an aircraft engine, as hot air kind of blows by it, you know, that's, you know, you can try to do it with hand calculations. And, you know, if you can do it, then you're, you're an ace, you're, you're better than I am. But most of the time, you're going to rely on some kind of computational tool to do so, okay? Right. And that's especially more complicated when you have convection, um, Entering the equation, okay? um, and so we'll and so we'll, we'll review this, you know, as we go through the course. But convection is basically heat transfer um, that occurs through a moving fluid, okay? And so uh, what you have from this is you have kind of a combination of both fluid mechanics and heat transfer going on at the same time, okay? And so for very simple cases, again, like the like the wall, um, we have this equation here. It's called Newton's law of cooling. But then anytime you go to anything practical, you know, let's say. Um, in this geometry here, where this looks like maybe a computer fin uh, for maybe a high powered uh, gaming computer or something. Okay? If you wanted to find the temperature distribution or the heat loss through this fin, um, you know, this, is, this situation is a bit too complicated to do with, with just hand calculations. So you're gonna have to rely on computers to kind of solve, help solve this situation for you. All right, so I'll do one more. So, you know, these, these slides are a little bit old and every year I try to, I try to plan it so that we can do a little bit of CFD um, but it's just, it's just kind of really hard to fit in, but, you know, I'll try again this, this year, okay? Um, but this is kind of a very simple fluid mechanics case. So we have flow in a pipe, um, and so we have a pressure on the left, a pressure on the right, P1, P2, 
Uh, in this case, P1 is higher than P2. And so the, the flu is going to flow from the area of high pressure to low pressure. Okay. And if you solve the Navier-Stokes equations, you're able to get kind of a very nice velocity profile. Okay. And so again, you know, only in the very simplest case are you able to solve the equations that govern the behavior. Okay. If you want to do something more complex, and so this is something out of my, out of my research, actually it's my colleague's research, um, where he's simulating the blood flow in, uh, in this patient. Okay. Um, this is not something that you can do by hand because it not only has a very complex geometry, um, it also has a lot of turbulent flow. So I don't know if you can kind of see it right there, but we have kind of a little bit of a turbulent eddy right there where the flow is kind of recirculating. Because what's happening is that, you know, you have a very high pressure system on the right, a very low pressure, low pressure system on the left. And so that's forcing a ton of flow through this little conduit right here. And it's causing a lot of kind of turbulent motion in here. Okay. And so, um, you know, even without the turbulence, it would be hard to do. But with the turbulence, this is all but impossible to solve by hand. So, you know, you need computational tools. That's, that's kind of the point of, of, this, of this whole thing, that you need computational tools. And so, you know, if you want to, if you want to work in this kind of field, you, I think it's really important to have some kind of background in um, how computations work, how the codes are built, um, just so that, you know, you can, you can better work with these kinds of systems. Okay. All right, any questions on, on this so far? Okay, so let's go over an over, let's go through an overview of the course um, with this flow chart for a software that I totally didn't buy. That's why there's a there's a watermark there. Um, but basically, you know, I, I like to think of this course in kind of four different sections. And, and again, you know, I have flow modeling at the end, so that's this is kind of the CFD part. We'll try our best to get there, but you know, for most, for most, for the last three times that I've taught it, um, granted, a lot of it was over COVID as well. Uh, we were only kind of we we're only able to get to find a bond, which is fine too. There's a there's a ton of uh, interesting stuff in there. Okay? And so if you're if you're wondering, you know, what finite difference and finite volumes are, these are basically the different kinds of computational techniques that are used um, to simulate this uh, these phenomena. Okay. So there's one class of methods called finite difference, and so that's what we're going to start with because I, I think it's a little bit easier to start with finite difference, and then we'll go over the class of method called finite volume. We'll talk about the differences between the two. Um, and you'll learn how to implement these codes in, in practice. Okay? And if we kind of, you know, um, blow these out to kind of the more the subtopics, this is kind of what it looks like. Okay? Uh, of course, you know, a lot of this probably doesn't make any sense right now. It shouldn't. Um, if it does make sense, then, you know, probably you shouldn't be in the class. You should be moving on. But, you know, as we go through the course, we're going to go over kind of everything in this, uh, um, everything in this whole thing. Starting with reviewables, and so there's there's quite a bit of review that we want that we need to do in this course, uh, both in terms of heat transfer and, and fluid mechanics, uh, but especially in programming. And so, you know, we're gonna I want to spend a, a good deal of time reviewing MATLAB programming because that's something we're gonna use a lot in this class. Okay. okay. Um, so a question you know I I always get asked is you know I go through kind of this introduction section here and then. You know, kind of what a lot of people want to do is that they just want to get using the softwares already. And so, you know, you may you may be aware of some flow modeling softwares out there. So I know some of you are coming from uh, my FEA course, and so I know there's Ansys that's out there. Um, there is a uh, um, shoot. Um, there's another there's another one. Comsol is another uh, software out there. Okay. Um, and so if you're looking from a perspective of just using those softwares, it's going to take us a while to get there because you know, we're going to spend a pretty good amount of time talking about the theory of how these kind of codes are built. Okay. And during that process, um, you know, I think a lot of people might be asking, you know, why are we going through all this theory? Why are we, you know, have to learn this? Well, we can just use the software. Okay. Um, and to that, you know, what I always tell people is that even the most well made software, so even, even the ANSYS in the world, which I think is very well made, um, even the ComSols in the world, um, at the end of the day, you know, they're not. They're not the Bible, they're not God, you know? They're tools. And just like any tool that you can use in a, in a workshop, it can be misused, okay? Um, and they all have their limitations and best practices as well, okay? And the thing with computational work is that, you know, a lot of it can kind of seem like a, I call it like a black box sometimes. So sometimes you kind of feed a problem to a computer, you run it through a software and you get a solution, right? Um, what you may not know is that the solution you get may not be reliable or may not be correct, okay? And so to kind of help debug those issues and to kind of help, you know, make sure you're setting up the problem right, you really kind of have to have a good grasp of the theory and kind of the, uh, um, 
of the concepts behind it, just so that you can kind of set up the problem uh, correctly. Okay. And so that's why, you know, we're going to spend a, a good amount of time in theory. We're going to be building up a lot of the codes on our own, because I think it's only through that process that you really get a good understanding of how these codes work. Um, so that when you're using a practical code out there, um, you can kind of debug issues a lot better. Okay. And if you work with any kind of these computational codes um, as well, and, you know, I think people in finite elements last semester can attest to this, you know, it's not going to work the first time. It's not going to work the second time. It's not going to work the third time. And so, you know, I think what's more important than, than just, you know, using the software is to figure out how to debug it if things go wrong. Okay? And that's where your kind of knowledge of theory comes in handy, because that's, that's what's going to help you debug these issues. Okay. And, you know, from a kind of a more uh, philosophical point of view, you know, if you kind of um, leave this class and you go out in the industry and, you know, um, you know, your manager or your boss or whatever says, that, oh, you took a course in computational heat transfer, so you can use ComSol, right? And so, you know, I guarantee you the boss that told you that is not going to understand how ComSol or ANSYS works. And so they're going to be trusting you to, to know what you're doing. And so, you know, part of knowing what you're doing is kind of understanding the theory behind it all too. And so that's kind of your responsibility as an expert to really kind of know that. And so that's why we kind of spend a lot of time with theory in this course to really kind of understand that. Okay. And from kind of a, a more researchy point of view, you know, um, new techniques and new methods are being researched every day. If you kind of want to stay on top of it, you have to have kind of a good grasp of the fundamentals. Um, and that's kind of what I hope to get in this class. Because I think for a lot of you, you know, this is your first, your first um, time, you know, taking a course but we're actually learning computational techniques. And so, you know, my first priority in this class is to make sure you have a good foundation on the fundamentals. And then from there, it's kind of e a lot easier to learn kind of other tools. From okay. All right, any questions on, on this? Okay. okay, so as an example, um, and so, you know, um, of why it's important to learn background knowledge. So let's, let's say that, you know, you have your vet, right? Um, and so a vet is someone that you trust to kind of take care of your pet, right? And so um, on the one hand that they, they need to know uh, what I call procedural skills. And so these are, they need to know, you know, where the best spots to give a shot to for your animal, um, how to take a blood sample or, you know, performing just simple kind of eye and ear check. So it's, I call that kind of procedural knowledge. Uh, but they also need to know conceptual knowledge too. And so, you know, they need to know why they're giving your animal a shot. So they're not just, you know, shooting up your animal with just random stuff, right? Um, and so they need to know, you know, if your if your pet is sick, they need to know what to do. Okay. Um, sometimes you need you need their help to interpret your your pet's behavior. Um, and if nothing's working, you know, you kind of rely on their expertise and their conceptual knowledge to come up with new treatments. Okay. And so it's kind of the same way. It, you know, it's you know the nature of the work, of course, is different. But you know, when you have a professional engineer out there using computational tools, you know, the the assumption is that you know you have kind of this conceptual knowledge. So that you know you understand why you're doing things the way that they are, and uh, you know what to do when things go wrong. Okay. Uh, any questions before we go over the the syllabus? Okay. Okay. So the syllabus uh, is posted on the course website, which we'll give a tour of in a second. But I, I want to go over kind of the main points of the syllabus. Okay. All right, so first I wanna go over office hours. And so uh, my office is actually in this building. So even though I'm an ME faculty, um, they gave me kind of a broom closet up in CS. And so if you haven't been there, it's on the fifth floor of this building, okay? Um, so my office hour times are Mondays from three to four. Uh, so that's before the lecture today. Uh, Wednesdays from one to two and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And so I try, to space, I try to space out the office hours. I always try to make sure I have at least three sessions uh, per semester. And I try to vary the time. So I have one in the morning, uh, one in the early afternoon, one in the kind of the later afternoon. And so, you know, of course, you know, I, I, and I do that to try to make sure that at least one office hour times will work with your schedule. But of course, I know that, you know, you guys are extremely busy, you know, students are more and more busy nowadays than, than ever. Um, so I know that this, even this is not going to work out uh, for everyone. And so if these times don't work out for you, then, you know, just let me know. I'm always happy to meet by appointment. And so we can either meet over Zoom uh, or if I'm on campus, you can come up to my office. And so, you know, just, just know that the, uh, appointment option is available, okay? So, the, so don't think that you're just restricted to these times, okay? Um, so with that said, you know, I know last semester I, I did, there's some days where I did just purely virtual um, office hours. Uh, for this semester, I do plan to be on campus for all of these times. And so I should be in my office for, for most of these, but of course I'll, I'm gonna open up the Zoom room as well. So if you prefer to attend the office hours via Zoom, um, that option is available to you too. And so 
you can find the links, the Zoom links for all three office hours on the course website, which I'll show you kind of in, in just a moment. Okay. Um, and so what are office hours for? And so office hours, I think, are the best uh, chances to discuss um, anything that you're confused about from the course. Maybe the lecture kind of flew over your head. And so I'm always happy to clear up, uh, clear up any confusion for that. If you're having trouble with the homework problems, especially the MATLAB, um, the MATLAB programming, um, that tends to happen a lot in this course. And so if you're um, you know, struggling with the MATLAB part, I'm always happy to, to help out with that. Um, or if you need some help studying for the exam. So you know, basically any help that you need with the course, um, just feel free to drop by office hours. Um, you know, I'm happy to help, okay? Or if you just wanna say hi, that's, that's, that's cool too. All right, learning objectives. And so, you know, we see learning objectives again, but these are the learning objectives for the entire course. And so, you know, by the end of the course, this is kind of what I'm hoping that you're gonna, um, that you're gonna be able to do, you know, at the conclusion of all this. And so, you know, the way I, the way I kind of organize the, uh, uh, the way I kind of organize the course is that, you know, first I look at what the course is. I think about realistically, you know, what's, you know, what are the things I want you guys to be able to do by the end of the course? I write those as course level learning objectives. Um, and I designed the entire course around them. Okay. So I have four uh, course level learning objectives for this course. And so first is just a conceptual one. And so I want you to be able to describe, you know, why computational simulations are important. I want you to be able to write the code that's necessary for simulated heat transfer of phenomena. Um, uh, learning objective three, you know, we'll, we'll try our best to get there. I, I hope, I'm hoping we can get to a little bit, um, a little bit of it this, uh, this semester. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see. Fluid flow is always kind of tough. Okay. Um, and number four is, you know, this, this one I want to get to for sure is to effectively use commercial and research software for simulating heat transfer. So, you know, I want to make sure I get to that end of the end. And so um, it's either going to be ANSYS, which I believe is installed on these computers, uh, or we may use um, OpenFoam. Um, open foam is the, uh, the other software that I've learned this way too. Okay. So I want to make sure I get to a little bit of that this semester as well, just so that you kind of see uh, kind of all the theory and all the concepts we've been learning in the class, how to actually apply that to a practical code. Okay. And so that's, that's, that's my plan for this, uh, for this semester. Okay. Assignments, deliverables. And so, um, I have seven homeworks planned, um, two midterm exam and a final project. Okay, so those are going to be the deliverables for this uh, this course. Okay, um, just like all my courses, you know, I, I have the policy where I drop the lowest homework grade, uh, but please do them all. And so, you know, I, I I designed the homework assignments to not only help you with you know studying for the midterm exam, but you know it will also help you with the final project as well. Okay, and since this is a technical elective, you know what I usually do for my technical electives is that I don't I don't really grade the homeworks for correctness. And so, you know, because I, what I believe is that, you know, you guys are in this course um, because you're really interested in learning computational heat transfer um, or you like me for some weird reason. And so, you know, I, I figure that you want to be here. And so usually I don't have an issue with, you know, people just kind of mainly in for the homeworks. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of a, you know, I, I kind of, that's a little bit of trust I give to you guys. So, you know, I'm not going to give you the most feedback on the homeworks, but I will post the solutions. And so, um, and so I just want to just want to let you know. So I'm not going to be giving I'm not going to be leaving many comments on your homeworks, uh, but do make sure you check your your homework solutions against you know the solutions that I post. You know, especially before the midterms, especially before the final projects. Okay. All right. So the midterm exams um, they're not cumulative, um, but the final project will require knowledge gained from the entire course. And so you know don't don't forget the first midterm stuff after we're done with it. You're still going to use it. And so. You know, just, but the midterm exams, I believe, you know, it should just be kind of a contained thing. So that's why I make the midterms not cumulative, okay? And so these are the dates that we have, I planned for all of the exams and projects. And so midterm one is gonna be Wednesday, March 8th. Uh, midterm two is Wednesday, April 19th. And the final project is due the Monday after finals week. And so that's Monday, May 27th, okay? Um, so for the midterm exams, you know, I believe I wrote this in the, in the introduction email too. Um, you know, you have to be in person to take the exams. There's no plan to kind of offer that virtually. And so, you know, please make sure to kind of plan to be on campus on, on those days. Okay. All right. Any questions on, on any of this so far? Yeah. Are exams going to be like No. So the exams are just going to be on, uh, on the conceptual information. So it's just going to be pencil and paper. Yeah. There's no, you don't, and you, there's no code writing on the exam. So you won't, you won't have to write code by hand. It's really just on the concepts and just and kind of the math and the techniques. 
which sounds weird. I think it's, I know it sounds weird at this point because I've, I've emphasized how much programming is in this course, but you know, as we kind of go through it, it'll, it'll make a lot more sense. Okay. All right, course grades. And so this is how the grades are gonna break down. So homework's gonna be worth 10%. Um, each midterm exam is going to be worth 25%. And the final exam is uh, 40%, okay? And then uh, based on how you score on those, I'll assign a letter grade based on this breakdown. So I think fairly standard breakdown, okay? Um, so I usually don't have to do this in my, in my elective courses because people tend to do pretty well in my electives. Um, but uh, what I always do is I, I, at the end, I check to make sure that the, that the average grade in the course is at least an 80% for technical electives. And if it's not that, then what I do is I just add points to everyone's grade to get it to that point. But um, I haven't had to do that yet. Usually my, my, my average grade in, in, in my tech electives are usually around like 81, 82. And so, you know, I haven't had to do it yet, but you know, that, that option is still there. All right, textbook. And so, um, you know, if you haven't before, you know how I feel about textbooks. I think the textbook industry is run by the mafia. And so I don't require a textbook for my course. I post all the lecture notes. And so, you know, that should be everything that you need. I try to be as thorough as I can with the lecture notes. And so that should be all that you need for, for the course. Uh, but if you are interested in picking up the textbooks, I, I referenced two in this course. And so one is by uh, Parviz Moyne. And so that is called Fundamentals of Engineering Numerical Analysis. Um, I love this book because it's, 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 it doesn't look that big. It's, it's fairly small, um, but it's very thorough. And I think it explains things in a way that make a lot of sense. Okay. And then when we get to the finite volume stuff, I'll be using the Mukulad book, which is called Finite Volume Method for Computational Fluid Dynamics um, from 2016, okay? Um, and so with regards to the homeworks too, I, I post the full problem sets on the homeworks. You don't need to look them up in the book. And so if you do want to get the textbook, it would really just be for your own, uh, for your own reference um, if it's something that you want to do, okay? And so, if, and so what I always tell people is that if you want to pick up the textbook, you know, find a cheap version. You know, I tell people never pay full price for a textbook. You know, if you if you are able to find one, you know, sailing the high seas, then I think that's that's probably the best option for a lot of textbooks. That's how I got a lot of my textbooks too. All right, programming skills. And so, you know, I've kind of already emphasized this a lot, um, but there is going to be a lot of MATLAB programming in this class. Okay. And so I am kind of planning the class under the assumption that you have at least a little bit of experience with, with that. Okay. And so of course, you know, you may be asking what constitutes as a little experience. You know, you've opened the program and you kind of have, you kind of know how to write some commands in MATLAB. Um, and you kind of know a little bit of the programming structures like if statements, for loops, while loops, things like that. Okay. Um, and so, you know, we are gonna be writing a lot of MATLAB code. I do plan for a lot of it to be kind of in, kind of in class. And so I'll, I'll try to make it as interactive as possible. But of course, any experience that you have beforehand, I think will really help, okay? Um, so I do plan to have a review. And so that's kind of what I hope, what I hope to spend most of next week doing is reviewing MATLAB. Um, and so if you're a little bit kind of unsure of it, your MATLAB skills, um, you know, we are gonna do review next week. And so, you know, definitely look forward to that. And recently what, what we've done as a department too, is that we've made these kind of short five minute review videos. Um, and 205 was one of the courses that we wrote, that we made these videos for. So I'll make sure to link, I'll, I'll make sure to link those videos to you guys. Um, kind of spent a good amount of time last summer making them. And so we definitely want to make them, put them to good use. Okay. And so if you're kind of um, ever wondering, you know, what an if statement is and how to write the code for it, you know, those videos are kind of good for that. And so I'll definitely post the link to those videos so that you can um, use them as you're kind of refreshing yourself on MATLAB. Okay. Um, and I know, you know, I know MATLAB kind of, makes people kind of feel a certain kind of way. Uh, and so, you know, if you're ever kind of uncomfortable with the MATLAB programming, you know, please, you know, please don't hesitate. You know, I know, you know, I've had people in this class that said, you know, I've honestly never opened MATLAB before in my life, uh, but I'm willing to learn. And so, you know, those students, honestly, they're kind of the best to work with because, you know, they're really excited to learn and, you know, and they're not shy about asking questions and, you know, I'm not shy about giving help as well, okay? So please, please let me know, you know, don't never feel like you're asking kind of a dumb programming question. There's no such thing. I know it's cliche, you know, but I'm, I am always happy to answer kind of any question related to programming. It's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's almost like a different language. And so, you know, please don't be shy to ask me help for help on, on the program. Okay. All right, uh, course website. So, you know, um, like I said, we're, we're gonna be doing kind of a more comprehensive tour in a second. Uh, but this is kind of just an overview of kind of what you can expect from the website. So basically any content that I make for the course, whether it be kind of the lecture notes, um, the lecture recordings, homework assignments, homework solutions, exam solutions, 
Um, for this class, uh, I'm gonna be posting a lot of sample codes as well, study guides, you know, all this can be posted on Canvas. And so I, I don't I don't hide anything from you guys. So I post I post everything on there. Okay. Uh, announcements are also gonna be made via Canvas. And so you know, hopefully everyone got the, the first email that I sent uh, last Friday. Okay. Um, and another thing I've made is a Discord server. So um, if you've had me before, then you should be familiar with this. So I, I created a Discord server just because I feel like, you know, I started this over the pandemic um, just because, you know, we didn't have a physical classroom. So it was, it was, I think it was really difficult to kind of interact with classmates. Uh, but even now that we're back, uh, I still think it's kind of a nice thing to do. And so I've created a Discord server. And so if you're ever kind of working on the homeworks late at night and you kind of need help with one thing, you know, just shoot a question in the Discord server and usually someone, someone will answer you. Someone will kind of help you out. So. Um, you know, I, you know, please use the Discord server, you know, introduce yourself. Uh, I'm going to leave an introduction message, you know, soon after this, after my next class as well. Um, so I, I try to be active on the Discord server, but, you know, it's, it's also, um, I, I honestly, I kind of mute the notifications on it because sometimes it can be a lot. Um, so I really made the Discord server for, for you guys. You know, okay? But if there's ever a time where no one can answer a question, you can always tag me. And so if you tag me, so even with the notification muted, it does send me a notification. Um, and so if you tag me, then I will come and, and answer the question. Okay. Um, any questions on this? Policies, so uh, late homework. So I, I do accept late homeworks uh, up to a week after it's due. Um, and so if you can't get a homework in on time, you'll, you, know, you can still turn it in for late credit. Um, I do have to dock points. And so uh, each, my policy is that each day the homework is late, uh, I'm going to dock 10% off of its uh, maximum allowable points. Okay, and so if you turn if you turn in the homework, you know, two days late, then the maximum score that you can get is 80%. Okay, um, and so I, I have this just because you know I you know I know things are going to get crazy you know this semester, especially for the seniors. I know this semester is going to be with senior design, and everything's going to be crazy applying for jobs, and so I, I always want to give some flexibility in terms of you know, how you can turn it in, you know, but. You know, we still have to kind of respect the due dates to a certain degree. So that's why I kind of have that policy. Okay. Uh, regrades, I'm always happy to look at things again. And so if you, um, you know, if I made a mistake in grading your midterm exam or your, or your final project, uh, please let me know as soon as possible. And so, you know, please, uh, you know, don't be afraid to ask for that. Okay. Um, but I do, I do put a deadline on this as well. And so, um, and so from the day that I give back, you know, whatever it is, either be a homework assignment or a midterm exam, um, you have a week basically to get back to me and ask, you know, um, for any kind of regret. Okay. And the reason I do this is because, you know, I, I what, ha what, what tends to happen, and this happens anyway, is that, you know, usually at the end of the semester, you know, um, you know, someone might may need a certain grade um, and they go back to midterm one and say, Hey, you know, um, why did I miss these points on midterm one 12 freaking weeks ago? And so I have to think back. And so I'm like, I honestly, it's a little tough for me to remember that. And so, you know, I, you know, when I do return things to you, especially the midterm exams, um, I do write comments on that. And so I, I want you guys to be reading that. And so, you know, this policy is kind of to make sure that, you know, you are reading those things as I give them to you. Because if you're not reading those until the very end of the semester, you know, they're not really that helpful because, you know, you don't really remember kind of what you did 12 weeks ago too with respect to like kind of a specific question, okay? And so if you want, you know, regrades on something, you know, please try to try to be kind of timely. All right, email. So email, I'm usually pretty good about emails. Uh, this week might be a little bit slow just because uh, everyone's sending me their introduction emails, but usually I can get back to you either, you know, same day if I happen to be on the computer, if not, you know, the very next day. Uh, but it kind of helped me out to kind of organize my inbox because it can be kind of crazy sometimes. Uh, make sure you put egme417 in the subject line. If you could put it in the square brackets, that would, that would help too. Um, just to kind of make sure that, you know, if I get an email from someone in this class, then I know it's about 417. All right, graduate credit. And so for the grad students in this, uh, in this course, uh, because it is a 400 level course um, by our university policies, you are required to do kind of an extra assignment um, in order to get graduate credit. Okay. Um, and so, you know, um, I'll have details about this uh, later on in the semester. Um, but usually what I do for this class is that I kind of add an extra component to the final project. Okay. But, you know, we'll see, we'll see if that's, uh, that's still the case this semester. Honestly, so, you know, honestly, I, I usually don't have that much of an issue in my, in my tech electives, but, you know, I have to say it, um, you know, we have very strict policies on this from the university level, so, you know, we don't, we can't tolerate it at all, and so if you are ever caught cheating on an exam or a project, you know, 
Um, at the very least, you know, I have to give you a zero on that on that project. And a lot of times it ends up being an F in the course with the referral list. Okay? Uh, so it is very strict, but, you know, but what I also want to say is that, um, you know, just like with the programming help, you know, I don't feel like my job in this course is to be a policeman or to be like a, like a watchman or, or whatever. Okay? I want everyone to really kind of take away a lot of things from this course, especially for the seniors that are going to be graduating soon. Okay? And so, you know, if, you, if you're ever at a point in this course where you feel like you're struggling or if you feel like you're not really keeping up or you're really struggling with the homework assignments, you know, please just talk to me. Okay. And, you know, what I promise you, you know, at this moment is that I'll do everything that I can to make sure that you're at a point where you can succeed in this course. Okay. Um, because if you ever get to the point where you, where you cheat, where you kind of um, you know, copy or, you know, whatever, um, then at that point, there's, there's not much that I can really do. And so, you know, because we have, like I said, our university has very strict policies on this. But, you know, if, if you can talk to me before that, there's a lot that I can do to help you succeed in this course. You know, maybe we can kind of work out another, another deadline that works better for you. Or maybe, you know, we can work out another arrangement or, you know, we can have private tutoring or, you know, whatever. There's, there's a lot of things that we can do. Um, but the only, the main thing is that you have to come talk to me. And, you know, and I promise you, you know, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to, you know, criticize you or belittle you or anything like that. You know, I really do just want to, I really do just want everyone to succeed. And so if you're ever struggling, you know, please come talk to me, you know, and I promise you I'll do everything I can. Okay, and so with that, we're almost at the, we're at the end of the slides. And so after this, we're going to look at the course website. Um, and so the last thing I want to go over is just homework zero. And so some of you have done this already, so, so thank you for that. Um, but the first assignment that I have in all my classes is just to uh, send me an email uh, just introducing yourself, okay? Um, and it's graded just purely on completion. So even if you send me an email, just say, hey, Dick Face, give me credit for this, then I will give you full credit for it. That's, that's, that's the assignment, okay? Um, but I would, I would appreciate it if you didn't send it, if you actually, you know, said something nice, okay? Um, because, you know, we, we're going to be spending, you know, the next, you know, 16 weeks ago, okay? And so it, it really, it's, I find it's a lot more pleasant if I, if I kind of know kind of who you guys are you know, what your, what your goals are, what you hope to get from this course, um, and anything that you're concerned about. Because, you know, if you tell me anything that you're concerned about now, then that's something I can address through the course, okay? Um, so please send me an email. Um, you know, like I said, you're free to kind of write anything that you want, anything that you, you feel comfortable sharing. Uh, but if you're not sure what to write in your introduction email, I have these four questions here, okay? You don't have to answer these questions, but these are just kind of an, just an idea just to kind of get you started, okay? And so things like, you know, what kind of career would you want to have? You know, what do you, what do you want to learn most out of this course? What do you want to get out of it? Do you have any worries or concerns? And you know, do you have any um, <laughs> interesting hobbies or, or interests? Okay. Uh, so the deadline for this is going to be this Sunday. And so if you send me the email by 11, uh, 59 p.m. Sunday, then I will, you know, you will get full credit for it. And remember to add EGME 417 into the subject. Right. So a lot of information, but you know, but all this is in the syllabus, except for except for the homework that should be on Canvas. Um, and so if you kind of want to read through any of this again, it, it will be on the syllabus, which I'll show you kind of where it is on the website as well. Okay. Um, any questions on on anything that we talked about? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and look at the website. <laughs> Do I have it up here? Okay, so let me switch to student view so that you can, uh, so I can switch to kind of, um, you know, what you guys are going to see. Okay. All right, so this is the Canvas site. So I, I try, I, I, I hopefully I, I cleaned up the kind of the left toolbar here to make it clean. Okay, there's a whole lot of weird kind of um, tools that they allow us to do, and so, and so I try to disable all the useless stuff that the school try to makes us use, and so I try to make it so it's just, it's just, it's just the things that are important. And so on the left here, you can see we have a link for the homepage. We have a link for the announcements. We have a link for the assignments. You can check your grade. Um, you can look at all the people in this course and files. Okay. All right, but the first thing you're going to look at here when you come to the course website is the homepage. Okay. So that's this page right here. Okay. So basic information of the course. There's my name. If you click on it, then you can see that's me. A little bit of uh, about myself. That's my... Twitter, uh, or no, Tinder profile teaching, okay? Uh, class times, Monday, Wednesday, 5.30 to 6.45. You guys all know that because you're all here. Class location, in case you forget, CS309. Um, but, you know, again, you all know that because you're all here. So rack it out there. 
Okay, so course description. So, you know, this is, a, you know, just a little bit of a description of the course. Um, and so, you know, if you um, were paying remote attention today, then this should be a kind of a repeat for that. Okay. Here we have the course level learning objectives. Okay. And here we, <coughs> here we have the syllabus. Okay. Um, so this is a file that you can download. And so if you click on this, this is the syllabus that I am contractually obligated to write. And so if you kind of wanted to kind of clear up anything that we talked about today, all of it is in writing here on the syllabus. Okay? So you can uh, go ahead and look at that. Okay. Here are all the Zoom links. And so I have four Zoom links for the course. So the first one is for the lecture. Um, and so like I mentioned in the email, um, I, am, I, I do plan on streaming all the lectures uh, for this course on Zoom. Um, and so if you can't make it to the lecture room um, or, you know, or you just, you know, you just want to be at home, I mean, who doesn't want to be, then you can, you can view the, um, the lecture on Zoom. Okay. And so if you want to do that, the link for that is here. And then the links for all the office hour Zoom links are here as well, as well as the day and time that they're available, okay? And so like I mentioned, you know, for, um, uh, for this semester, I, I do plan to be in my office on most of these days. Um, and, so I, and so if you're on campus, you know, you can just come up to my office um, or, you can, or you can attend on Zoom, okay? Okay, uh, another thing that I have here is, so I've, this isn't the first time that I've taught this course um, you know, with Zoom. Um, this will actually be the third time that I'm teaching over Zoom. So you can, you can view all the past recordings here. And so, you know, this goes back to spring 2020. And so you should see spring 2021, actually this is the fourth time, spring 2022. So all, if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you wanna, um, for some reason, take the course um, before the course and view all the lectures, it's all there, um, but I don't recommend it because it's gonna take you a long time. But, you know, if you, if you want to view past recordings and that, that link is there as well. Okay. And then here's the link for the Discord server. It looks like it's working because, you know, quite a few people are joining it. And so if you're interested in joining the Discord server, um, the link is, is here. Okay. okay, so that's just kind of basic information about the course with the Zoom links. Okay. This is the part that I really want to highlight. So this is where you're going to find kind of most of the content for this course. Okay. So at the bottom of the homepage, I have this uh, section here called the course outline. And so what you can see, it's, it's a week by week breakdown of you know, how this class is going to go. Okay. And as we go through the semester, these links will become clickable. Okay. The only one that's clickable now is week one. So we go click on that. And so what you can, uh, what you, what you'll see, I call these the weekly pages is you'll see kind of a title in terms of, you know, what you can expect to learn a little bit of a blurb of, you know, uh, going in more detail, what you expect to learn. Okay. The learning objectives for the week um, here, I'm going to post the links for the recorded lectures as well. And so if you wanted to go back and watch the lecture, you can, you can do that from the weekly, the weekly pages. Okay. Uh, any homework assignments um, are going to be posted here as well. And then any files that are related for that week um, as well. And so any kind of lecture notes, any kind of homework assignments, homework solutions will be posted on the file section. And it looks like I forgot to clean this up because last year's um, lecture slides are here. So I'll, I'll clean that up after. Uh, of course, you know, the one that we just went over is the 2024 version. Um, and so if you ever, you know, if you are ever in doubt of, you know, where are the lecture notes for the week? What are the learning objectives for the week? Where are the lecture recordings for the week? You know. Um, come to these weekly pages and then you know, they'll, they'll have all the information. Okay. Um, and so what I usually do is that I, I usually try to post these on Fridays. And so um, the weekly page for week two is gonna be posted by this Friday. And so you'll be able to preview kind of what's gonna be expected for, for that week, as well as the learning objectives and any kind of lecture notes for, for that week. Okay? And so if you're interested in kind of staying a little bit ahead of, of schedule, then you can, you can look forward to Fridays for, for that. Okay. Um, all right, any questions on, on this? Okay, so that's the home page. And so that's, that's most of, I think most, of, I, I kind of designed it so that, you know, you, you can interact kind of with everything from the home page or the course outline. Okay. If you look at the assignments page, this has all the assignments. And so right now there's only one, which is the introductions. Okay? And so you'll see the due date um, for the assignment. And if you click on it, you can read a little bit more about the assignment. Um, you know, once I start posting homework sets, you can download the homework sets from these pages as well. Um, and so I'll have a link for that. Okay. Um, and that's all that. Okay. And we have your grades. So pretty standard stuff. So whenever I grade something, I input it into Canvas. And so you can check this page to see um, what your score was in all the assignments. And then I think it'll, it'll, it should compute your kind of your overall grade based on that uh, as well. Okay. 
And so you can see the, uh, the breakdown of the three main categories, which is homeworks, midterm exams, and final projects. People's tab, this, this has a roster of everyone in the course. And so I believe you can message them on Canvas. And so I know some people do that. And then finally, we, get, we have the files tab here. And so um, this, this is almost kind of like a Dropbox folder for the course. And so anytime I post lecture notes or anytime I post kind of solutions or code, um, it should be in here, okay? And in fact, I've, I've already posted all the lecture notes for the entire semester. And so you can look on the peer. Uh, and I've posted all the sample codes for the semester too. And so you can check this as well, okay? So it's a lot of codes, but we're gonna go through all of them, baby. We're gonna go through all of them before the class is over, okay? All right, um, but you know, the, the you, hopefully you shouldn't be able, you shouldn't have to look in the files tab for any specific file. I do post all the files that you need on the weekly viewer. And so if you need a specific sample code for the week, or if we need like a lecture notes for the week, I will post it there. But um, you know, what people have told me in the past is that if you're looking for a specific file, then the files tab can be, can be useful. And so that's the reason I have that. But you know, if you kind of just follow the weekly viewer and you kind of download everything as I post them, um, and you shouldn't need the file for file okay. um, All right. Um, so that's the course website. So any uh, any questions on any questions on the website? Okay. All right. And so uh, that's all I had planned for today. And so you know, I know it's the first day, and so you know, I didn't want to start anything too heavy. And so on Wednesday, when we come back, you know, we'll we'll do kind of a, a very a very brief review of, of, of heat and fluids. Um, what you'll find is that the review is, is, is probably not what you're going to expect because we're going to focus a lot on the heat equation. Okay? So we'll talk about the heat equation. Um, we'll kind of revisit that and we'll talk about kind of the important qualities of that that we're going to use going forward and how that helps us develop. The code. Okay? All right. So thank you everyone for coming, uh, coming today. Uh, welcome to the course again. Welcome to the spring semester. Um, I do have another course starting at seven o'clock. And so I'll be here for the next 45 minutes. And so if you want to come by and, and, and chat for a bit, I'll be here. But and if not, hope you guys have a good rest of your evening and I'll see you guys on, on Wednesday. Professor Tran. Yeah. Yo, what's up? Uh, I sent you an email. Um, <clears throat> I have a situation that I need to talk to you about. Uh, preferably to do it in private. Um, sure. Sure. I'm okay. a little patient, but so I can wait for a response. Okay. Yeah, I'll 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 read it right now. I'll, I'll send you a response. Yeah, I got, I got the okay. email. But um, I didn't anticipate the way you were gonna um set up the class. So uh -huh. it's putting a some of the details have just put a wrench in everything that I've uh, had planned. So. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Let's 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 talk offline. So I'll, I'll read your email and then we can we can find a time to talk offline about it. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll talk to you later. Okay. Good night. Good. Yep. Good night. Hey, how's it going? Uh, okay, sure. So, uh, okay, awesome. Good. Okay. Awesome. It was, it was like pretty much access related, but like that finite element, like that was the base of the job. I see. So with like, it's an institution class, and we're basically going to be using the yeah. for the final project. And then, so that same kind of idea. Yeah, so this one we're not, you know, we'll see. So I, we'll do answers if I'm kind of lazy at the end of the class, right? I do, I do want to teach open form, because I think that's something that's unique. Um, yeah, getting more experience with ANSYS. Um, just FEA in general. Yeah, I mean, so I think usually what the companies like to see in those cases is some kind of like portfolio in terms of you know you like you using ANSYS for like you know like formula or something like that. And yeah, so you, I had that because I did those two classes around the project of part. Yeah, which they said they good. They just wanted to see more. Yeah, it's always tough. It's it's always the the catch twenty two mm -hmm. of applying the stuff to the student. It's like. You know, we like you, but you need more experience. But you don't have experience because you're a student. Yeah. <laughs> they want to. They want to. They want you to have three to five years of experience at entry level. Entry level. They said like two to three. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, you're a student. How are you supposed to get the experience with that? Easy. Yeah.
He won the, and it was entry level too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> they want like senior level people working at like junior level wages. Yeah.